Welcome to the rocket profile of NASA's Space Launch System, the successor to Saturn V. The first stage of the SLS consists of four Space Shuttle main engines, RS-25Bs burning hydrogen and oxygen for around 7 minutes and 15 seconds. Each engine has a thrust of 2,279 kN in vacuum and a sea level efficiency of 363 seconds specific impulse, going up to 452 seconds in vacuum. The thrust of the four main engines is supplemented by two five-segment versions of the Space Shuttle's solid rocket boosters. These extended boosters primarily have more thrust, but also a couple of seconds more burn time. Their maximum thrust is about 16,000 to 17,000 kilonewtons each, with the solid fuel deliberately shaped to vary the thrust throughout the ascent profile to provide a smooth ride, high thrust early on, and then trailing off later in flight as the craft gets lighter. The variant of the SLS you see here is the Block 1, which will fly with the Orion capsule on Exploration Mission 1. Block 1 and Block 1B both have the ATK 5 segment boosters, while the Block 2 SLS, which will be the version that can match Saturn V's payload capacity to orbit, will need advanced boosters of a type as yet undetermined. Block 1 can lift 70 tons to low Earth orbit, while Block 1B can manage 105 tons. The difference between the versions is the second stage. Block 1 uses the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or ICPS, which has a single Arlton V2 hydrogen oxygen engine, providing 110 kN of thrust. It is basically a modified Delta IV upper stage. Block 1B has the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS, which has four Arlton Cs, giving it the extra capacity and a total thrust of around 400 kN. However, neither of these stages is really meant to get a heavy payload to low Earth orbit. Their low thrust weight ratio makes that somewhat inefficient. As you can see here, the first stage basically can get the rest of the craft to orbit, but they are meant to use most of their fuel to transfer payloads to the Moon and Mars. For Exploration Mission 1, the first stage will leave the craft with a 1,800 km apoapsis, the slightly negative periapsis, so that the first stage will re-enter. Then the second stage will push Orion and additional payloads to a flyby of the Moon. Orion will then follow a free return trajectory around the Moon and back to the Earth, while the secondary payloads will do their own things. However, with its service module, Orion can make a very loose high orbit around the Moon and break that orbit to return home. Given current numbers, if it makes a low orbit around the Moon, it may not have enough to come back. It is more likely to serve as a vessel to and from one of the Earth-Moon Lagrange points, where a number of missions might be performed. The first flight of SLS will be Exploration Mission 1, which will be uncrewed and is scheduled for no later than November 2018. After that, the expectation is that Europa mission will be launched on SLS Block 1B, and then the first crewed mission will be Exploration Mission 2, which will launch on SLS Block 1B as well. And since it's on Block 1B with the EUS, it will be able to make a low lunar orbit. Following that, there is the potential Asteroid Redirect Crewed Mission, which will send astronauts to an asteroid captured into lunar orbit. On that note, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the SLS.